Hi, I'm Sarah. And I'm Helen. And this is the Squiggly Careers podcast. Every week we take a different topic to do with work and we talk about ideas for action and tools that we hope will just create some clarity and maybe a bit more confidence and control in your squiggly career. And every week we try to take what you are listening to and turn it into tools that you can learn even more from. And there's quite a few. If you are new to Squiggly Careers, welcome to the world of career support that we're <laughs> offering to you. <laughs> it's quite a lot. So to make it simple, you can start with the pod sheets. This is a one page summary that has coach yourself questions. It summarizes the ideas for action we talk about. And it's got a few recommended resources, things you can read, watch and listen to if you want to dive a bit deeper into the topic. You can join Pod Plus. It is a almost every week. <laughs> session where <laughs> with my caveat that sometimes we just can't quite make it work but more weeks than not it happens and it's 30 minutes Thursday morning nine o'clock and it's brilliant I did it for the first time last week after a like three week break because of various things Sarah and I were doing and I was like oh this is why I love Pod Plus. Oh, I'm doing it's, it this um, week and I'm actually great. looking forward to it. <laughs> it's so good. It's just a community of like-minded learners. Sarah and I sort of take the topic we talked about and then everyone contributes their own ideas, their insights, their stories. It is a really positive learning career community. So all the information for that is on our website, amazingif.com, and we will also put it in the show notes, but email us, Helen and Sarah at amazingif.com if you can't find that. Also, follow us on LinkedIn. That sounded very direct. Follow us on LinkedIn. <laughs> the reason you might want to follow us on LinkedIn is because we put other resources there. So upcoming podcasts, if you want to kind of ask questions or connect with people, at amazingif on LinkedIn is a good place to go. So today we are talking about 10 squiggly career quick wins. It's going to be fast and furious <laughs> and very action focused. So we're recording this in sort of mid to late November. And obviously we will have some year in review, more reflective episodes coming your way. But before we get to that point, we thought it might be helpful if you are listening to this sort of in real time and you're thinking, well, what can I get done between now and whenever you're hopefully going to get a break towards the festive season in a way that feels realistic is going to move you forward and give you some really good momentum. We've also had a go at guessing. I've wrote outlining here in my bullet points, but I think guessing is the right word. We've guessed how long we think each action would take. We've done all these actions. So hopefully it's not a complete left field guess it's based on some data but we also wanted to make sure that they were genuinely quick that we weren't suggesting anything here that was going to take you three hours to try and get done so we'll go through each of the tools we'll tell you how long we think it takes and we'll give you a couple of examples to get you started so fast and furious we will start with number one and number one i feel like this is very helen sarah's idea but i think it's very helen one is pick a new tool to try out and we think it's going to take you about 10 minutes so not a massive commitment but the reason you want to do this is because it's much better to play with tools than to be scared of them and sometimes i think the longer you leave them mm. the more kind of fear gets associated with it because everyone starts talking about <laughs> them and then you're like i don't know how to use chat gpt what are they talking about and it all just feels a little bit scary and you feel less out and left behind by whatever people are going on about so i think if you can have like a regular try a new tool out thing you don't even have to tell anybody this doesn't have to be like a helen's five tools she's tried out this week it's just have a play for example miro is a really good one if you haven't used miro i'm currently using miro to uh, do mood boards on my house no way. i'm enjoying it greatly yeah i've decided that i'm just gonna do this so i've been doing that in the evening chat gpt a really good one you can use it in so many ways you can use it for research you can use it for shortcuts in your work loop so some people in our team have started using loop which is a microsoft teams kind of tool that integrates comms and things that sounds very boring it's very useful <laughs> paper so we've always for example we've never used powerpoint in any of our squiggly sessions we've always drawn models and frameworks and we always get asked what tool do we use paper is the tool but there are so many and we did a podcast a while back actually kind of ai tools and tech that can help your career development so if you're thinking oh i'm not quite sure where to start then i would download that podcast and try out one of those tools sarah you mentioned coggle recently I had two experiences last week where prompted by someone else, I then tried out a new tool. So I think that's the other way to approach this, like look out for what you see other people sharing. So someone shared a coggle with me and I was like, 
what's a coggle? <laughs> Other than sort of quite a cute word. And essentially, it's a visual mind map. So not dissimilar from a Miro board. So they would be good to try and compare and contrast and see which one you prefer. But then you can share it with someone. And this person was preparing for an interview for a different podcast and saying, oh, these are the topics we think we're going to talk to you about, Sarah. Like, how does this sound? So I sort of navigated my way around the coggle. And I was like, oh, this is fun. And then actually you and I were in a meeting together where the person we were meeting had some a sort of an AI plug-in to that meeting that was taking notes for him. So his point was, well, I often forget what gets talked about. And so actually it sort of just records the meeting and I think summarises the actions. And I was thinking, oh, that sounds useful because I am a real sucker for sometimes writing things down. I have messy notes. I sometimes put bits of paper in the bin that then three days later I realise I really need. And I was like, this could be really helpful for me. I don't think it would stop me using notes and scribbling things down and doodling and those sorts of things. But, you know, just have a record to come back to, to kind of go, I think I committed to something in that meeting. (laughs) What was that thing? And so that's one that I'm going to try out in the next week or so. I'm going to work out how to do that for a team's meeting because we do that all the time and just give it a go. That is fireflies.ai. Oh, is that what it was? Okay. Yeah, so that one, I'm going to do that. I had excellent experience earlier. I was prepping for a podcast, an upcoming episode, and I was writing my notes. And then I think someone came, a delivery person came. So I obviously got distracted. <laughs> Great old interruptions. And I came back. I could not remember where I'd written my notes. <laughs> so I was like, is it on my phone? Is it on a post-it <laughs> note? Have I thrown the post-it note away? And then I was, I was trying to go through my emails. They're all like the five places that I currently very inefficiently store notes. So I think fireflies.ai would probably be more helpful for me. So we think 10 minutes, have a play move on, come back to it the next week, sort of see how you get on. Action number two, a thoughtful thank you. We reckon this takes five minutes, so even shorter. Good question to ask yourself here. Who has made a difference to you at work this year? Or sometimes it's easier, I find, to ask yourself, who has made a difference to me this month? Because over the past year, I sometimes actually get lost in everything that's happened. And just really think about, well, what would a quick thoughtful thank you look like? Is it a voice note? Is it a WhatsApp? Is it a card? Is it a message? Is it email? Just basically saying the difference that they've made to you. And we've talked before about this idea of the helpers high, and you're much more likely to help other people when you know the impact of your help. And often I think we assume that people know they've made a difference to our day or to our week. And so often they don't. So recently we've got an exciting project that we actually not allowed to talk about just yet coming up in February. I know, it's very rare that we do anything like that, but I actually don't think we are allowed to talk about it yet. And somebody made an introduction to get us started with that project. And so I did just leave her a voice note just saying, oh, I really appreciate it. And talked a bit about kind of why it was so great and because she's so credible and this person was always going to listen to her. And I honestly don't think we'd be doing this project without her kind of making that connection. And then she left me a message back just being like, oh, this is like the best thing that's happened to me. I absolutely loved listening to this message. Hopefully, because I'd just taken the time to do a thoughtful thank you. So it doesn't have to take you long. You will make the other person's day and it can be quick and really easy. Idea for action number three is a So What Now TED Talk. So we originally had this as a watch TED Talk. I get like the TED newsletter every week and there was one that was like, you know, highlighted their TED newsletter, which was all about kind of how to make learning as addictive as social media. And I was like, oh, and I watched it and I was like, this is why TED Talks are great. It was actually a very interesting presentation all about how Duolingo is designed to democratise developments. Very interesting. But also the speaker was great. So I think I learned as much about how to sell a presentation, mm. you know, how he came across on stage with his humour and his authenticity. I learned as much about that as I did about the content. And it's like 10 minutes, like sort of 15 minutes max of your time. So watching TED Talks is great, but what's even better is to so what now a TED Talk. This is where you watch it and you just take an extra couple of minutes, that's all you need, and you ask yourself three questions. One, what did I learn? What are like the key messages I've taken away? Two, So what did that make me think? So maybe you're like, oh, I don't do that today or that could be useful for my team or I'd like to learn more about that, like whatever it is. But you're just taking that learning kind of that one bit further. And then three, now what? 
action will I take? So what did I learn? So what did it make me think? And now what action will I take? And it moves it from, you know, kind of passive, but probably quite enjoyable learning experience to something that's much more active and much more actionable. And it is just a tiny little tweak to how you watch a TED Talk. So we're going to put a few links to TED Talks that we'd recommend, including that one that Helen just mentioned, just to get you started. Because I do sometimes think, a bit like when you've got loads of podcasts, which obviously we know what that's like, there are lots of TED Talks. And I do sometimes look at it and I'm like, oh, I just don't know where to start and then maybe you don't get started at all so as well as how to make learning as addictive as social media we're also recommending 10 ways to have better conversations so that's celeste headley who's been on the podcast but her ted talk is just one of those brilliantly specific and she's funny but she's also really practical. I don't think you've watched many TED Talks that sort of have all of those ingredients. And then I've also suggested the anti-CEO playbook, which back to Helen's point about how to tell a story and to sell a concept, there's something surprising and very endearing, I think, about that TED Talk if it's not one that you've watched before. So action number four, this is our longest one because we've said 30 minutes here because I think it's quite hard to do this in less than 30 minutes, is have a curious career conversation. And the reason this made the top 10 is I hadn't done this for a while and I did two in one day a couple of Fridays ago and it has already made a massive difference to my development. A bit like Helen was saying, you know, you get out of the habit of good habits. Sounds like the wrong way around, doesn't it? But like you've got some good habits and then you sort of, you lose them along the way. And that's definitely what happened to me with Curious Career Conversations. I was thinking I used to be so good at this. I'd always make time for it. It's definitely how I created connection. It helped me to come up with ideas. And these two conversations really reminded me how important these conversations are. And I think the reason they went so well, where I have got a bit better than perhaps I was in the past, I had thought beforehand, how could this person help me? Not in a, this is going to be really transactional, here's the agenda with all the ways you need to help me, but just more so that I could be focused and have a few thoughts in mind to prepare for the chats. So I was just thinking oh, you know, well, what am I intrigued by? What am I interested in? And because I am someone who can fall into the nice chat trap, particularly when I've not met someone before, because I get a bit more nervous and more introverted when I've not met someone before, I can sometimes lose a bit of my focus. So just asking myself that question really helped. And I met one person who was completely new to me, who I'd never met before, which was brilliant. Though I always like, it always takes me a bit of recovery time afterwards, a real like introvert of like needing a moment alone afterwards. And then someone who I've worked with before, who I know really well, and that was much more relaxing and informal, but actually just as useful. And so for some people, this might come easy. Like for me, for example, I'll be like, oh, I'll just get in touch with that person. I've not spoken to them for a while. But if you're thinking, oh, this is a great idea, but I am I'm not sure where to start. I don't know who to have these curious career conversations with. It could be someone you've worked with before. So maybe a different team in your organization. Maybe you've worked with someone on a project, for example, but you've not been that close to them. Or maybe a company that you used to work in and you haven't reconnected with that person for a while. That's kind of where we get into this sort of territory of something called weak ties, uh, which is another topic we've covered on the podcast. Very good for opportunities when you work your weak ties. It could also be somebody who does a similar role to you, but in a different organisation. So in that situation, the point of connection is kind of the work that you do, but the point of difference is where you do it. And so you can often like both help each other with that curious career conversation because you can say, oh, how do you approach this? And this is a problem we've got in our particular team like how does that look in your organization so even if you don't know them very well it feels like you've got a real kind of shared understanding because of the work that you do I think with these curious career conversations finding those sort of small points of connection but not making them sort of people that you work with directly on an everyday basis is really where you you kind of learn the new knowledge because they're in a different world of work to you Idea for action number five is a lovely, quick, easy and very effective one. This is a five minute action, everybody, It is to ask for easy feedback on your strengths. So obviously there's lots of different ways that you can ask for feedback and some of them don't feel particularly easy because they're probably part of an annual process that takes you ages to fill in. This one is quick. So these are some fast feedback questions. What three words describe me at my best? When do you see me have the most positive impact? And what's one skill I have that you see is useful in our team? And I wouldn't recommend you ask one person all Hmm. of those questions because they're sort of different perspectives on you at your best. But maybe just start sort of asking around, see how similar people's answers are. What you're really aiming for with your strengths is you want consistency. So you want different people in different places to see the same strengths because that's what sort of builds your brand, specifically the strengths you want to be known for. And asking these questions just helps you 
collect more data for your development. So like one a week, ask one of these questions to one person each week. It is quick to do and you'll get a lot of insight about your impact. Idea for action number six, do someone a fast favor. So another five minute here. How could you easily help someone else? Could you teach someone a quick tech hack? Could you do some curiosity crowdsourcing? Share one thing that you're reading, watching or listening to that's helping you to learn more? hint here could you give a review to a podcast that you really that you, <laughs> that you really enjoy listening to and where it makes a really big difference when people I review? mean she's not said squiggly careers but you know what she's thinking everybody <laughs> I often think with fast favors they're often something you've been meaning to do for a while you either just keep putting off or you perhaps don't quite find the time for but you'll feel really good when you do someone a fast favor and often it is just always quicker than you imagine so sometimes it could just be saying oh have you spotted this or have you seen this somebody showed me on teams last week you know if you've got a teams channel with lots of different people in i wanted to at everybody in that teams channel because i think often if you don't at people it gets missed (laughs) and you know how you do it you just it literally is at the channel no it's at everyone as in the word, everyone, which sort of makes sense. Oh, or you can just like at amazing. Yeah, but that doesn't at... work in every team's chat. See, here's a five minute fast favor for you. Mm. So, well, <laughs> depend, depends, depends though. Is, I'm very You're so skeptical. Oh my God. Right. So that is so harsh. You didn't even let me like do the thing. You were like, oh, you already don't believe her because I'm better at text than she is. Like that bit is true. So if you're at everyone, this is good yes. insight. This is a good team knowledge. You, you so see, you at see, everybody. You made me doubt myself now. But anyway. No, I'm sure you're right. Well, that does work. That bit, I am right. <laughs> I don't know whether Helen's is also right, but I had tried adding the channel and that hadn't always worked. Maybe it's where the channel doesn't have a name. You know, if you just put people in it, but maybe it's not named. But if you at everyone, it does work. I think we should move on from that. <laughs> well, no, do you know, on that fast favour bit and tech in particular, uh, Sarah and I were in um, a room together last week, which you might be like, obviously, but not obviously. Hardly ever in a room together. we work remote. We're hardly ever in a room together. Actually, there were like just a few times where we would just get around each other's screen and sort something out quickly. And I think, you know, fast favours, you can do them virtually, but it's that like, oh, let me just help you fix that. I, tech, I think, is a really good example because everyone's got their little packs haven't they so it's a useful one i will try adding everyone later i might i look, I look forward to it happens. we're gonna to have to come back with like a correction or something on the podcast when we're like when sarah said we have worked out that's like half true or something i, th- I think it does work you know when there's like a newspaper yeah that's what i was thinking I was like, <laughs> correction on last yeah. week when we said this what we had to learn was this <laughs> I love it. Okay, look forward to that, everybody. Scintillating yeah. updates it's on like the Squiggly Chris podcast. podcast of all time. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, gosh. Uh, number seven, everybody, is to assess your learning agility. So we have a new Harvard Business Review article coming out soon on this topic, which is really, really exciting because we are super passionate about learning, and actually, we believe that learning agility is a really important sort of subskill within sort of being a learn it all. It's a basically when you can you can succeed in first time situations so learning agility means that you sort of take your past experience and you can adapt it really quickly to do things you've never done before and in squiggly careers that happens all the time so kind of the more learning agility we have the more we can succeed as we kind of squiggle into new positions new projects new places for example and we have an assessment this is probably a five to ten minute exercise i would say doesn't take you long to fill in it's kind of a couple of quick questions and then you get an instant score on your learning agility and then what happens the reason it'll take you a little bit longer is then you'll get an email which will have some more kind of insights for you on how to increase your learning agility and so between you filling it in reading your score and then kind of getting that email is 10 minutes max but it will give you a really good insight into where you're starting from and then you can dive into our article when it's out and read sort of different ideas for action which will help you to improve it idea for action number eight which I think is my favorite which is a slightly longer one I would say on average 15 to 30 minutes depending a bit on what you choose but the idea here is to add in an additional active rest activity into your week for one week so we're not saying you have to commit to it forever but we're just saying for one week you need to add in some extra active rest and I say extra because I do hope everybody does something that they would classify as active rest already As a reminder, if you've not come across that term before, active rest is something that isn't work, but that fully absorbs your focus. Basically, your brain doesn't have the capacity 
to get distracted by to-do lists or what you've not done. You know, like you're fully in it. You're fully present and you're in the moment. And this does look and feel different for different people. Active can be a tiny bit misleading. It can be exercise, but equally it could be painting. It could be playing a computer game. It might be gardening. It could be reading fiction. As long as you're fully in it, it counts as active rest. So hopefully you're already doing some of this. So what you might choose is to do more of the same. So you could choose to increase the frequency from say once to twice a week or twice to three times a week. Or you might choose to add in a different type of active rest. So Helen, what would this look like for you? If you were going to do this next week, what would adding in active rest look like for you? Well, I had a bit of failure recently with me attempting to do active rest. I thought it'd be good for being my children. We did origami. It was a disaster. Oh, it's really so that hard. Was, that was, that was, we've all been it's there. It's really we've all hard. Been there. It's too hard They for have kids. a lot of tantrums. Yeah, yeah it's way too hard. Everyone's <laughs> bought it so thinking, that. oh, this is going to be a yeah. lovely activity to do with my six-year-old. And then you realise, well, I can't do it, so how can they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly that. And then I've got my six-year-old just using a knife on the paper and I'm like, that's not what you do. That line's in the wrong place. And I'm trying like, to <laughs> empower her whilst also controlling where the folds are going. Yeah, that wasn't relaxing. I instead meditate on my commute. And I think what I need to do is not just use my commute. So Sarah and I went on a course earlier in the year, which I think it's fair to say I found probably more useful than Sarah. We'll Type come of meditation to it, the older, yeah, we'll end of the year it. podcast. Oh. It'll we'll feature. Oh, it'll feature. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so I did meditation and I haven't got into a brilliant routine with it, but when I do do it, I find it very beneficial. And I think I've basically stuck it onto on my commute. My train's about 40 minutes and meditation takes 20 minutes to do. But what I would like to do is do it every day for a week, not just when I'm on a train. I'd feel like a real sense of achievement if I did that. So I definitely feel better after doing it. That's a good one. Initially, I was tempted to just increase something I already do, which is some exercise classes that are very local to me. But in some ways, I was like, well, that's a bit of a cop out because I think I do that anyway. So I was trying to challenge myself to think, kind of what would some new active rest look like? And I actually went for adding in non-fiction reading time into my day. So I read lots of fiction in an evening and that's already active rest for me. So I sort of know that it works. I know reading works as active rest. Once I'm in a book, I sort of forget about everything and everyone else. If I read at the start of the day, I'd never get any work done, basically. (laughs) But I tried it today. Obviously, I knew the podcast was coming and I'd thought of this concept before. So I was like, oh, do you know what, actually... I'm going to sort of sit in a different space, get this book out that I want to read. And I'm just going to read. I'd only got 15 minutes. So I was like, 15 minutes. I actually set a timer on my phone, which is very unlike me, but that's because I genuinely only had 15 minutes. And I was away from laptops. I couldn't see any, you know, no emails coming up, nothing like that. Just sat and read it 15 minutes and then stopped. And I was like, oh, okay. And I feel better because of it. You know, already like, Actually, I sort of didn't quite want to stop because I was like, oh, I'm sort of getting into this now. And then I think I'll be more likely to go back to it. So it was a good little experiment for me today. I have questions for you. What were you reading? Limitless. Okay, got it. And did you feel good because you'd done it? Was it like a sense of achievement? Oh, I fit this in kind of good. Or did you feel good because your brain felt better because you were kind of focusing on something other than work second one I think Hmm. my achievement value which is my number one value doesn't come from 15 minutes of reading it comes from like projects that take three years (laughs) 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 as you know um but I think it was that I came away going you know like you're you've worked your brain in a different way I think that's what it did it exercised my brain in a different way I always find it really validating as well you know when you like you spend those little times reading and then at some point in the week that reading will have a relevance that you can't really predict. And then then you're like, oh, I read about this concept in this book called Limitless that might be useful. I just love how your brain like just stores it until that like magic moment when it's useful. But that only happens if you actually take the time to do a bit of reading, put some stuff in. I look forward to that moment when your brain sparks (laughs) with your limitless insight. I don't know if you do. I don't know if you always do look forward to my voice (laughs) notes, let's be honest. (laughs) I don't mind a voice note. I put you on two times speed I bet you do. I I, I would know that you do that. <laughs> Number nine, each one teach one. So, this one might take a little bit longer, maybe 20 minutes, but what this one is all about is identifying something you've got expertise in. So, you know, you've got a lot of knowledge of that area or experience in. Maybe you've been doing it for a while and then just share it with somebody else. This is sort of like, I think, a very generous way of approaching a growth mindset, sort of taking what you know so that someone else can grow. And I think the thing that stops people a lot of the time is confidence gremlins here because they think, well, 
how useful is this thing that I know or other people know more than me about it. And so you really do have to hate your confidence gremlin and just think, who can I help with kind of what knowledge I've got? And that could be in a kind of one-to-one way. So I might be like, oh, Sarah, I've just read this book. I'd love to just share my insights with you for five minutes because I think you might find it interesting. So it's one-to-one. It could be a one-to-team thing. So you could, um, that TED talk that you watched where you did your so what, now what? Maybe you're sharing your now what's with your team. That could be quite useful. Or it could be one-to-many, which would be you sort of sharing what you know on like a platform, a larger platform. Could be LinkedIn, maybe a part of a WhatsApp group, for example, or presenting at an event. And Sarah and I have done this in different ways recently. Sarah, you had a very popular post that you shared on LinkedIn. Would you like to talk about it? (laughs) I also had one that was an absolute disaster. But, Good to have a contrast. Yeah, but the reason it was a disaster was because actually nobody wanted to share it, which was interesting. So one of the things that I asked, I will talk about the disaster one because it's relevant to the podcast. I asked people, what podcast do you want between now and the end of the year? And people, interestingly, didn't want to comment on LinkedIn. So I just got a load of DMs mm. <laughs> and emails. And I was like, oh, that's interesting that people don't feel like it's okay to say, oh, I'd like a podcast about this. But maybe the insight is because you need a podcast on challenges or knotty moments you know on something that's hard so I did it and I was like oh no one's responding to it that was a bit of a waste of time and I was like oh no they are but just in a slightly different way so I was like oh that's just interesting so if you ever do have a podcast topic you can just always email us helen sarah at squigglycareers.com if that's a better way to let us know what you want to learn and what you need from us and I did another one on the 10 things I've learned from running amazing if for 10 years And actually, I really enjoyed doing that, that each one teach one. It's very rare that I will put things out more broadly. So the one to many, I'm much more a one to one or a one to team person, particularly in terms of the things that I share. But it was one of those things where I thought, well, if this is just useful for even two people who are starting up their own companies, I think there are some half decent words of wisdom here. Like If people test their ideas, if they get the right people around them, it's not even a well, don't make the mistakes that we made. I actually think I was talking about a lot of things that we got right, but some of them slightly more by accident than design. If you can design these things into running a business, I think you'd be smarter and better because of it. So actually, I really enjoyed that. I suppose given what we both do, I'm guessing we both enjoy kind of each one teach one. You sort of have to find your way of doing it. Um, And I did one recently as well. I went to a conference about a week ago, actually, and there were lots of interesting talks. And I'd actually sort of committed to sharing before I went, which is quite a useful thing with each one teach one. If you're learning something new, if you learn it with the intent to share it, it does mean that you are, you kind of listen to what you're learning in a slightly different way, because you're not just understanding it, you're sort of interpreting it and sort of deriving meaning at the same time. So I shared all of my notes from the conference, but I really tried to think about it not just being a flow of notes, but how could I make those notes useful for other people that weren't there? And that was in my mind when I was capturing them so it sort of reduced the work I had to do afterwards but yeah it's a nice generous thing to do give it a go with what you know so that other people can grow are you just now only talking in rhyming slang and or alliteration (laughs) I feel like I want to answer that in rhyming and I just can't I'm just like stalling in my head (laughs) too too tired now too tired one to ten we're nearly there team so number ten which I love this one because I think it is quick and easy we reckon one minute a day first day might take you two or three minutes I reckon by day two by day three we're talking a minute a day keep a three very small successes diary for 10 days so by the end of these 10 days you're going to have 30 successes the important bit of this when we say diary is we do mean it in terms of writing stuff down just because we know it really helps us we give ourselves more credit we get it out of our brain and onto a bit of paper. You could do it in the notes section of your phone. I actually do use the notes section of my phone for when I do this activity. So if I was doing this, I would literally write one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten to hold myself to account to do the 10 days. And I'd get my one, two, and threes ready because I'd almost be like, oh, I need to like fill that in. So I tried it for today. So my three very small successes diary for today reads as one, I exercised and walked on a busy day. I had two conversations focused on building relationships beyond where we are as a business right now. Three, ran a useful, and useful is one of our values at Amazing If, client session on career conversations. And I know that it was useful because someone replied and went, thanks very much. That was extremely useful. And I was like, I'll take it. It's <laughs> take short that and specific. <laughs> um, and so that was just, you know, like it was just one of those moments where you just get played back to you that thing that you are hoping 
that you have been for somebody. So, I mean, that took me probably a minute and a half to do when I was just sort of thinking, okay, what would my three be for today? Helen, what would your three be? Oh, gosh. I always think when I'm reflecting on my three very small successes, if I haven't started the day with it in mind, I kind of have to go through my diary. So I think there's nothing wrong with that. My three very small successes. I went to a session. I made time to go to a session for somebody's book who's launched today. I think it is important to make time just to show up for other people. So I'm banking that one. What else I did today? I did a session with one of our companies that we work with today and that went down really well. I feel like it's the third session in a series and I feel like I'm really connecting with that community and nice. that makes me happy because it's not just about sort of content, it's also about connection, which I think is a big part of what we do. I also, I know it's small, I did my to-do list today and it was like a really, don't do my to-do list every day, but it was really broad. It was everything from recording podcast intros to sending some emails and setting some clients and some stuff I totally carried over from Friday. I feel like I'm starting tomorrow better because I've done my to-do list today. Oh, I think that's a big one. Most people would be like ecstatic if they actually get through (laughs) their to-do list. But I think there what you heard is two different ways of doing that. Like I just sort of sat and thought for a few minutes whereas Helen was sort of a bit more structured and just sort of went back through her day it doesn't matter how you do it and as Helen said once you've got into doing it I think it's quicker and easier I think what this really helps with it builds your optimism and we just know that when we're more optimistic we're better at solving problems we're better at spotting opportunities and we're better at asking for the support and help that we need so it just sort of creates that positivity But keeping it small just helps us to be sort of specific and stops us skipping past our small successes. So I think we have more of these and we give ourselves credit for. So we won't run through one to ten because it's quite a lot and you've listened this far. So that's brilliant. You can bank that for a very small success today. But what we will do is summarise them all in the pod sheet. So you'll be able to kind of focus on which one you want to do and you'll be able to filter by time as well. So if you think, well, I'm going to try out one because I've got five minutes today, that might be a good way to get started. But that's everything for this week. We hope you found those 10 things useful. Let us know what you put into practice and we'll be back with you again soon. Some might say it was extremely useful, Sarah. (laughs) Some might. (laughs) Some might. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. (laughs)